Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. I'm here to tell you don't give up on optical flow in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. All right, I've got a whole tutorial about working with optical flow. And if you're like me, you probably tried it when it was first introduced and found it was rare for it to work. And I, I honestly didn't even revisit it uh, at all. Let me just show you a quick example of why it can be a problem. Let's look at this clip here. So we go super slow motion. And if you're paying attention to anything that comes in front of when his arm goes in front, you can see what's happening there. And it's even worse. Right there. You can see Optical Flow is having a hard time of finding what is the foreground and what is the background. And you can see the person in the middle, their arm is being influenced and being distorted. And all Optical Flow technology has a problem when one thing goes in front of another. Which one's the front? Which one's the back? So it has its uses. When it works, it's remarkable. The reason you use Optical Flow is to create slow motion effects when you didn't shoot with a high speed camera. And I, I don't have a 1080p camera that shoots at 60 frames a second. The only thing that I have that shoots 60 frames a second is my 5D Mark III at 720p. So I shot at 30 frames a second and then slowed it down considerably. I actually did a speed ramp than a super slow, so it's even slower than that. Um, but let me show you a project where I thought there are three ways that, that you can uh, change the way frames blend. Frame sampling, frame blending, and optical flow. Uh, frame sampling just copies the frames. So that's where you get that stuttered effect. Uh, frame blending actually creates new frames, but there can be ghosting involved where you can see a little bit of the previous frame. And then there's optical flow. When it works, it's amazing. So let me show you the problem first, uh, the edit where I, I had to use it. So the last three clips here, before we go to the uh, logo, I'll play this for you. So we've got a big sweeping outdoor shots deep in the forest that I had to go to shoot these. And it ends by following a tree vertically until we see the sky. It gets nice and white and boom. And we bring in the logo. Okay. So I actually shot the tree the opposite way. I shot top to bottom, but I just reversed the speed. And when this went out for review, they thought that, that these holes that you're looking at right here, these woodpecker holes, didn't look very good. They wanted a very nice, good looking tree. So I did have another shot of a tree. And this tree also I panned down. And I was actually showing this um, hard hat in the forest and how uh, people had been in the forest and causing problems. So I can't use the hard hat. I have to reverse this and I have to replace this clip. So if we delete this clip and I drag this clip in, the first thing you'll notice is it's not long enough. Not only is it not long enough, but I have to cut that out. So I'm gonna reverse this first by right clicking, choosing speed duration and reverse speed. So it's still the same speed, but now it's going in the opposite direction. So I can't start this clip until that point there. Now look at how small it is. There's no way it's gonna fill that area up. So I'm going to have to steal some from these clips here and increase this clip too. So to do that, I'm going to, um, let me make this one a little bit longer first. And to do that, 
I'm going to go into my rate stretch tool. Let me zoom in and drag this out. This one I'm going to stretch out. And this one also I will stretch out. And I'm going to stretch it backwards because that's where we go up to the sky and I've got a dissolve going to white. So let me grab my rate stretch. All right, so now I'm filling that area and you can see we've, we have yellow effects indicators. Okay, so if we look at this, I'm just gonna select this and set an in and out point slash key. You can see how jerky that is. And also this is, it's the same thing. When I was looking at this, I was worried just like before with the arm coming in front of, of the other person, I'm looking at the leaves coming in front and all this parallax movement, parallax meaning that something in the front is moving different from something in the back. These three shots were all shot handheld uh, on my 5D Mark III. So I'm standing there and, and I'm not on a tripod panning. If you're hitting on a tripod and panning, there's no parallax. But here there is all this parallax movement. And I'm looking at it thinking, no way is optical flow going to, going to work. So let's change these to frame blending. So speed, duration, can't do them all at the same time because they're different durations. And you'll see the red show up. This, we've got to render this. So once that's done, I'll render in to out. It's rendering the in and out. I'll speed this up for you. It's almost like it, it's moving and hesitating, moving and hesitating. It's just not doing a good job. So let's go over to here where I've already got this set up with optical flow. So the same three clips are here, except now they're set to optical flow. So again, I'll select these three. I'm just hitting the slash key to mark an in and out and render in and out. If you've tried optical flow in the past and you didn't render, then you're never seeing optical flow. Optical flow must be rendered to be seen. You can't even guess what it's going to look like. So, like I said, when, when I was confronted with the problem at the ending of this um, piece, I, I tried frame sampling, frame blending, and optical flow, and I just output three of them. And I was convinced that the optical flow one was a throwaway and it ain't gonna work. I was blown away. Not only did it, it work, it looked beautiful and really fi filled out the end of this scene, this kind of a dreamy quality and the super slow motion rising to the sky. So I also had to reverse that, that clip as you saw before. All right, let's speed this up. Look at that, smooth, pristine, and here's the sun rising up. Absolutely amazing. And it saved the scene. When they asked for changes, my first thought was, can I paint out the woodpecker holes? Oh my goodness, I could but it sure wouldn't have taken, it would have taken a lot longer than that. Do I go out and reshoot a new tree? Well, the, the time of the season is changing 
everything was green in the summer when I shot that, I'm going to go have to find something that's green too and, and has leaves because all the leaves have fallen off. Um, so I worried about that and then tried optical flow and it saved my bacon. Wow. I'm thrilled. That's why I've gone to this trouble to make this tutorial, just to wake up editors who have tried it and bailed on it and thought, eh, I'm not going to use it. Just keep it in the back of your head that when you have a problematic clip, you know what? Give Optical Flow a try. If you like the music in this, which I just love, um, it's from Artlist and I have an affiliate link in the, uh, in the um, uh, description that you can go check out. I also have a tutorial on Artlist. I love them. They save so much time for me for grabbing music and dropping it in. All right. If you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and on the front of the channel. Uh, one time or monthly donation. So much appreciated and thanks to all of our wonderful PayPal supporters. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to shake you up and say, don't forget about things like optical flow.